because that makes it easier. You know, half of those attorneys don't get fucking high. So when you're defending somebody, you really kind of get lost. That's where I come in. I could be a mouthpiece, you know. I can't go up there and testify and say shit, but I could fill your fucking, I could fill his lip and let him ask, ask questions that, you know, could fucking help him win the case or whatever the fuck's going on here. I always loved that avenue. I thought somewhere along the line I would fucking fall into something, but again, you don't fall into fucking law, okay? <laughs> Again, Uncle Joey's being fucking ridiculous here. You don't fall into law. You got to fucking go in there and uh, just fucking do it. But it's so weird when I was watching that documentary on that. I really wish I could have done a podcast at that time with the documentary behind me because it was just so fucking interesting. And I got to be honest with you guys, I lived in a lot of places. I miss Boulder. I miss Boulder a lot. Like, I miss walking around those streets. I miss what it was. I mean, Boulder's completely different now. It's grown 10 times since I've been there. I don't even think there's any fucking hippies left, you know? But I love to go back with my daughter and my wife. Not, I, I'm taking a break from the planes. United fucked me up last week. I can't go on no planes for a while. Mm -hmm. I got PTSD from United Airlines. I, it's, it's, it's over. Once I saw that dirty silverware, I'm like, fuck that shit. I can't deal with that stuff at all. Dirty silverware, guys. No, I can't. I got to move the fuck on. But in time, I'm going to go back to Boulder and say my goodbyes. You know, I've never gone back to Boulder since 95. Never. Never. Didn't even. I always, when I went back to Denver to work the comedy works, I always said I'm going to take a ride to Boulder. I shit the bed in Boulder, guys. Not that somebody would point me out now in Boulder. I got plenty of friends still in Boulder. I still talk to them. I still keep in touch with them. The problem is me, as as Joey Diaz, I always felt that I shit the bed in Boulder. Boulder opened the, I don't know. Going into Colorado was like going into God's country. For me, it was at 18. I had gotten my eyes open to a complete different world that I wouldn't have got my eyes open to living here. All these motherfuckers do is go to Florida and Atlantic City. You know, that's it. Jersey people go to Florida and Atlantic City. That's it. That's not me at all. I don't like fucking Florida and Atlantic City twice a year I could go and I'm happy. So when I went to Colorado for me, I always felt like I was uh I was living in God's country. You know, and then I went there and what did I do? I fucking kidnapped people, I robbed the university. I robbed the town. I got married. I fucking fucked that up. I got arrested. I went to prison. I mean, you know, and the hits don't fucking stop. You know, the hits just don't stop in Boulder. And you know what? I usually don't feel guilty about shit. Like, I don't give a fuck what you think. This Boulder thing really bothered me. My behavior in Boulder bothered me. Just little things. I always try. I almost tried to stab a guy. I, you know, it just, <laughs> no, it just, guys. <laughs> Boulder caught me at the wrong time, man. I was the age of 24 to fucking, what, 24? I got there in 86. I went to Boulder first in 83, but just to look, and I swore I'd never go back there. I went back in 86, and I stayed till 95 in Boulder, so that's nine years. So when I left Boulder, I was about 32 or 33. I... I even on the way out, I, I, I fucking spit on them. Because on the way out of Boulder, I had two driver's licenses. <laughs> and I was going to Ogden, Utah to do my first triple tour. And fucking, I was like, man, I'm short on money. I got to fill up my gas tank. I filled up my gas tank, and I gave the guy my license, and I said, I'll be back. I left my wallet. He goes, take your time. And I never went back for my license. It was $28 or something like that. But again, guys... This is what I'm talking about. So it's taken me five, 28 years to forgive myself over Boulder. And now, maybe this year, we we're thinking about it this July, but I think we're going to go next year, give the fucking airlines a chance to get it together again. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take my daughter and my wife to Boulder and walk around and, uh, you know, tell them where I lived and show them where I went to school and stuff. I don't know. Maybe I'll open up her eyes. 
maybe it'll, she'll want to go out there when she's older. But I think uh, it was a great place. It was a great place for me. Till this day, I'm very happy I did time, but I'm very ashamed that I did those things in Boulder. And it really, really, really fucking bothered me. So when I left there, I said, you know what? I'm going to take a breathe from Boulder. It's like doing time. Boulder is such a paradise that I took myself out of there. And I gave myself time. Like Chris Cornell and Fe fell on black days. I just go, you know, I had to do it. Yeah, I had to do it. So now I'm ready. I paid my fucking dues to society. I paid my dues to myself. And now I could go back and walk around with my chin fucking high, you know. And that's how I feel. If you ever get a chance to go to anywhere in Colorado, go. I don't care if it's Telluride, especially if you live in a big city or something, go to Boulder. Go to Telluride. See those mountains, man. Those mountains changed my fucking life. They didn't change my life enough to stop stealing and snorting coke. <laughs> <laughs> I still laugh about my, I had a friend that used to always go, what the fuck are you doing in Boulder? Doing boulders? That's what he would ask me. What the fuck are you doing in Boulder? Doing boulders? I wish I would have put more of this in the book, My Life in Boulder. It was... It really, I, I was in with some great people. I was in with some bad people, but I was in with some great people also that I still keep in touch with. And they're like fucking family to me. And the people that I was with there that moved away, I still keep in touch with them. I have friends in Mississippi, Columbus, Ohio from Boulder. I got a guy in Minneapolis. He used to come to my shows at the House of Comedy. I got friends all over from those days, from 1985 in Boulder. I still got fucking friends. We're all a bunch of old sacks of shit. But, but I can't explain. I got something out of Boulder. Like, when you hear all my stories about growing up my friends in Jersey, it was great. I had a blast with these motherfuckers. But it was nothing. My Boulder years added to that. I forget all the people that were in my life. But like Danny Feebles and his wife. I had some good fucking friends in Boulder. They were there with me. When I started comedy. To this day, at least, let me tell you how much I fucked up. <laughs> For the last 10 years, I've been trying to go back to the Boulder Broker. And I even had a, a guy who worked there that reached out to me. And I asked him if he could put it together. I fucked up so much in Boulder, they won't even have me back at the broker. Where I fucking started. <laughs> comedy works will have me. But Boulder, am I ashamed of telling you this shit? Yes, I am. But at the other time, I'm proud of telling you this because I changed my life. Now I could walk in there and go, you know what? I did what I had to do. I'm back here. I'll go to the, I'll go to Chautauqua Park. That's where the gods live. You know, I go to fucking North Holly, North Boulder Park. I still I still remember where uh, the guitar player from the Eagles made a statue for his daughter when she died there. And I would always go over there and eat lunch and just sit next to the statue. Not Glenn Fry, not the fucking guy they thrown out, but the guy who joined the Eagles of Rocky Mountain Way, the guy that sings all that shit. He lived in North, he lived in North Boulder when I lived there. And his daughter died when she was four, and he fucking made like a, a dedication at North Boulder Park. Boulder was very good to me, guys. And, uh, I'm happy that I changed my life around and that I go back to Boulder with pride now. And that's the Monday motivation on fucking May 1st, guys. I'm excited this book is coming out tomorrow. And I'm excited it's over with. I put this to rest. I'm going to do uh, Boston Sports tomorrow when the book gets released. And then I'll keep you guys posted on the book signings. I haven't heard shit. I told her about this a month ago, and I haven't heard shit. I haven't heard anything on New Jersey 12. I was trying to get on New Jersey 12. Mm -hmm. Because I went to the gym the other day, and I saw one of my friends, Bill Bellamy, put out a book. And he was on fucking New York Live. And I'm like, I don't even want to get on New York Live. I don't want to do any of those shows. But I would like to go on New Jersey 12 and talk some shit. And, you know, go down to our Ponte restaurant with Erica and just talk some shit. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. But... <laughs> 